The crypto community uh, expecting a call from the SEC any day now on the approval or rejection of the spot Bitcoin ETFs, though approvals are pretty widely expected at this point. Joining us right now on what that could mean for crypto at large. John Palmer is the president and CEO of Digital. It's a separate entity from parent company CBOE uh, Global Markets, which is the listing agent, or I should say exchange, for spot Bitcoin ETFs. Uh, CBOE Digital is not involved in the process of launching the ETFs, but it would benefit uh, from their approval. What do you think we're going to hear? And is there a wrinkle in what we might hear? Well, I mean, I, th I think you've seen quite a lot of uh, progress right. made, really, uh, last couple of weeks. Even yesterday, we, you know, we saw some back and forth between the commission and, and the issuers on the S-1s. Uh, so I think that's good sentiment, right? I mean, progress here is good. You're seeing the, the, the agencies engage. You're seeing the issuers engage. And, and all the filings from the exchanges are all up to date at this point from what we can see. So, so let's assume that there's an approval. Do you think there's certain ones that get approved? Do you think it's a whole, all of them get approved at the same time? How does that work? And then what does it mean in terms of as they get launched, how much Bitcoin they're going to be buying in the market, what that does to the price? Has, has, have we already bought, bought the rumor, sell the news? What's the thought? Yeah, it's it's obviously a, a pretty big competitive milestone, right? We have uh, quite a quite a few different issuers w with filings in. Uh, the SEC has different dates for different um, rule filings on right. the exchange side that they can approve, but it's it's you know there's so there's a couple different scenarios, right? They could, as you mentioned, approve a few amount, or they can approve them all at once, you know. So. Time will tell, I think, between today and right. tomorrow how that's actually going to go. And then you still have the S-1 aspect that has to be made effective, right? And so we've seen the the, uh, the agency engage with the issuers on that. And so both the rule filings and the S-1s have to be both approved right. and made effective before they actually can list it. Okay, so impact on price. For those who have been speculating the past month or two or three now that this day is going to come, has it moved as much as it's going to move? Is this the, the, the day it gets announced, it moves another you know, 20, 30, 40. I mean, what are we talking about here? It's hard to expect because we have to really see how the capital flows into the ETF. I, I think, obviously, uh, an approval is bullish, but we've seen uh, a big move recently. So the, the best part here is that it's, there's going to be additional investors that get access to, to Bitcoin that maybe don't really want to natively hold it themselves, right? So they're going to be able to buy it. If I told you it was going to move 15 percent, that I didn't tell you which way. I don't think what? I'd be surprised. And w w <laughs> right, but pick away. Well, it's like that down. every day. Practically. Yeah, not really. But pick away, up or down. I think it depends on whether what which way the approval, if it's approved or not approved. Well, let's say it's approved. If it's, if approved, it's approved, no. If, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. saying if it's approved. Go with approved. If, goes, if it's approved, I think it's likely we see more of an upside than a downside. You do. Yeah. And then do you see it becoming something? I mean, I remember we've had people on this broadcast that come on. Kathy Woods says it goes to five hundred thousand uh, dollars. A Bitcoin. We had people years ago come on and say it'd be a million dollars of Bitcoin. Do you think that's directionally where this all goes? Do you think that there's sort of a cap on, on what it is? Do you think every, every investor in, a, in the world decides that they need to have some portion of their um, assets in Bitcoin? I think it depends, again, on, on how much we see flow in, right? Bitcoin right now market cap is just over 900, 915 billion. Right. So even a successful ETF launch in one year could be 10 or 15 billion dollars in AUM. That would be quite successful compared to some of, you know, even some of the most successful ETF launches. So even that is, you know, we're only talking one or two percent of the current market cap of Bitcoin. So how much is that really going to inflate the price, you know, to, to the, the levels you mentioned, 500,000 or a million? Time will tell. Um, but again, we also know there's a fixed supply of Bitcoin. So what the, how that impacts the supply and demand dynamics of the market and how much capital is actually flowing into the ETFs, I think, will be very focused. Uh, and market. what's going to happen to the price uh, and the fees around these ETFs? There's part of me that thinks that ultimately they're just all going to get compressed to close to zero because there's nothing that's going to be particularly distinct about any of these funds. I, it, it's a good question, right? I think you see different... Uh, expense ratios and pricing, you know, across similar ETFs, even in today's world. So whether we see the prices and the fees, um, or at least I should say the fees of, of the different issuers and the different ETFs converge or not, um, I think time will tell there's obviously that competitive nature. And, and I think we'll have to wait to see how the capital And is there comes always going to be a discount on, the, on, on these ETFs? Uh, it's a I good mean, you question. look at like the grayscale yeah. ETF and there's always been a massive discount. Yep. Right. Well, I think there's there's the expense side of it, right? And so how they manage that and, and how large the expenses are going to impact, you know, what the investors are going to get on return, you know, based on the, 
versus comparing maybe holding. A spot and what do you think about the folks who haven't gone into this? So are we going to see a vanguard all of a sudden, which has been sort of, you know, on the sideline, jump in? Do you think there's always going to be a group of, of folks in finance who are just like, we're not doing this? Uh, I do. I think there. I think there are going to be folks that maybe always will say that's not for us. This is this is our core business, and and so this is where we're going to stick. And then you're going to, you're going to have others that maybe are, um, you know, maybe more on the bleeding edge of the spear of, of you know different types of products and offering them. And, and so I think for the folks that aren't in the in the bucket yet or aren't you know at the table ready to list, they're they're going to watch this and they're going to see how successful it is. Bullish for a Coinbase. Bullish for a Robinhood. Not because they do it because people are going to buy it as ETFs instead. How do you how do you think about the exchange universe? Right. So uh, we run a spot exchange right. at Cebo Digital. So from my perspective, there's uh, a couple different points. Right. You're going to be able to access Bitcoin through an ETF and not have to buy it natively. So, you know, you're going to have those participants enter the market. But I don't think that someone that already is trading Bitcoin is going to choose the ETF over the Bitcoin. They've already made that journey. Right. But now you're going to have market makers, you're going to have larger institutions, you're going to have potentially pension funds, RIAs that are involved in this ecosystem. And so it's going to grow the demand and it's going to grow the right. participants and they're going to need a place to hedge. Sometimes they hedge natively with just spot Bitcoin. Sometimes they might actually use derivatives. And so that's where we see the true growth from our, our perspective is in the ecosystem and uh, right. the use cases beyond it.